What is going on, y'all, for another sick episode on the Anvil Show tonight, week one in the books. Unfortunately, we don't have Clyde the Voice with us tonight. He is on base serving our country, so our prayers are with him. Hopefully, he gets back home safe. He's not overseas or anything. He's just out uh, on an assignment right now, so he'll be home soon. So, it's just me and Pat tonight. So, Sammy, let's go ahead and get into it. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. Sick Podcast. And Bill Show. The sickest Indianapolis Colts podcast. It's going to be sick. Sick, sick, sick. Happy Tuesday night, y'all. Pat, let's get you in here, big dog. What's going on, brother? Uh, oh, living the dream. dream. I hear that. I hear that. Week one in the books, huh? What'd you think? Um, I was overly impressed. I was saddened at the outcome, but over impressed with the play of most of our offense and definitely impressed with our defense. Absolutely. Before we, you know, we lost Clyde, we were talking about um, Anthony Richardson and how he performed thoughts on that real quick. Then I'll jump in. It was phenomenal to see a 21 year old kid go out there shrink the field as well as he did in his debut game. It was quite impressive. Oh now, man, it was it's exciting to see. I, I wanted to see I wanted to see Shane stretch stretch his arm out a little bit, you know. Yeah, me too. I, let, I let, it, let him hit hit those bombs out there and they didn't. Uh but I went back, watched the highlights and they stayed in um a two set safety in the back. So I could see with that, with the way they were playing him, I can see why he didn't, but I really did want to see him uh, let go, let, let loose of that cannon. Oh yeah. I think everybody did. I mean, what we, what, what was showcased in preseason, you know, it was amazing to see what kind of arm strength that kid has, man. It's yeah. like, yeah, we are, we know the running ability, but we just want <laughs> I mean, it's fans. I mean, I think we just really wanted some exciting throws downfield in Indianapolis Sunday. But, you know, it was – it's a learning curve for everybody. You know, Shane's just trying to – I think Shane was just trying to really ease into it himself. You know what I mean? As a head coaching role, seeing seeing the field, seeing the players, checking things. I mean, that's what we got to remember too. Shane's, you know, technically a rookie in all this too. I mean, yeah, he's been coaching for several years. He's still young though. And uh, we just got to remember, this is also his first year as a head coach. He wants to try to be precise. He wants to feel things out as a um, an emotional coach, I think. You know, unlike Frank Reich, who's a more analytical coach, I believe we got more of a emotional coach with Shane. But, yes, AR um, looked phenomenal. He was poised. He never gave up. That running touchdown was great. You know, his first game, couldn't ask for nothing better for that kid. Um, offensive line obviously still struggled at times a little bit. Play calling was decent at best. Like you said, we wanted to see some down downfield plays, I think. But um, all in all, man, I mean, the defense was aggressive in the first half, I think. And I think Gus got a little bit conservative in the second half, especially more toward the fourth quarter. Um, it just seemed like they were getting, you know, four, five, six, seven yards every possession toward the end of the game. And I just don't know if it was just the defense was tired or it was just play calling. I mean, what do you think about the defensive play? I The defensive play was phenomenal all the way up towards the end. Um, but it did look like they were getting gassed a little bit. But when, when you have no running game, your offensive line isn't holding the way they're supposed to, you know, and, and you do the three and outs several times and your defense is right back on the field, that's how they get gassed. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned the running game. Boy, we – I think we missed Jonathan Taylor this, you know, this Sunday, Ooh, you know, with all – Did we? With, every, uh, with everything going on with him and, you know, but there's some positively on the horizon with Jonathan Taylor. We'll touch on him just briefly real quick. Um, 
they were saying he could pass his physical today. It looks like he can. And supposedly he said he'll be ready for week five. So what do you think? Does he play or does he still hold out? Uh, my God, I hope he plays. If not, they're going to find him. If he passes the physical and he's able to play and he holds out, he can get fined big time. And we need him out there. I guarantee you we would have won that game if Jonathan was, if Jonathan was out there. Because look at the designed run plays for Anthony. When they did that, they started bringing the box in. And that's the time to throw those, those deep balls. Yep. When they start when they start filling in the, into that box. Um, but then they moved away from the only run game that we had, and that was Anthony. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and they kept going back to Dion, and he averaged what, like 1.4 yards a carry? Yes. That, is, so that is not going to get the box stacked. That is not going to open up that downfield lane. You know, so having – Go ahead. Okay. I was just going to say, having Jonathan back would have would have opened that up a lot. Well, it's funny. It's it's great that you actually bring it up. Maybe that was the reason why Shane didn't try the deep ball. You think? The oh, I guarantee it. Just, yeah, I, gar- so. I guarantee it. Yeah, it, they didn't have to stack the box. That's why they were running um, two safeties because they everybody knows he's got a cannon. Yep. And. and we have no run game because we have no Jonathan Taylor. So there's no reason to stack the box. Your front four, your front seven, absolutely manhandled our trenches. There's no reason to bring anybody extra. So protect that deep that deep threat. If I was a defensive corner, I would have done the same thing. But if we had Jonathan back there, if we had the threat, uh, a real RPO threat, then – they would have had to take care of that situation. They would have had to bring in people into that box, which would have opened up the downfield. Absolutely. So, yeah, I'm, I'm 100% believe if we had Jonathan out there, we win that game. Absolutely, man. It was just uh, – <laughs> I mean, other than the disappointing loss, but, you know, fans are still remaining optimistic, which is what we were really hoping for, you know. Uh, the vibe in Lucas Old Stadium that day. Oh my God, <laughs> it was lit. Yeah, everybody. Uh, I wish we had our, our applause button because every Colts fan deserves an applaud. That, that Colts makes all y'all Colts nation. You know, y'all did a great job. Yeah, that that stadium was rocking. Hell, we could hear people from home. Oh my goodness! You know, we, house. Oh, there ain't nothing like it. Yeah. Nothing like it. Tailgate was pretty lit too, huh? Tailgate was beyond lit. <laughs> Those barbecue oh, sliders you made with the home gating sauce was phenomenal. Oh, yeah, sure. Shout there out was, to our boy at home gating barbecue sauce, y'all. Yeah, there there was not one speck of meat left. Dude, I think there was like one bucket left. <laughs> And, and I'm pretty sure we we probably fed 150, 200 people. I don't know about all that. Man, there, there were people coming and going, coming and going the whole time. No, I know, but I don't know if it was 200 people or not. We're going to have to get somebody out there with a clicker and start counting everybody <laughs> for us. <laughs> <laughs> he said we're going to start having like a little like a little door guy with a little rope counting people. <laughs> We'll, oh we'll, we'll put Adam J in charge of that. You're gonna put the littlest one of the littlest dudes out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he's one. Of, he's one of the meanest son of bitches you can ever cross. This, this is true. He's a scrappy little shit. <laughs> he is. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, give me your take on on Ar. What? How did you think he did? Man, I just we're we're in such good hands with this kid, man. I mean. He's a phenomenal, first and foremost, he's a phenomenal human being. Let's just get that out there. He's his vibe that he puts out, his attitude that he puts out. Um, people love to be around him. The locker room's behind him. I mean, we've seen everybody come to celebrate with him on his first touchdown. So we know that the team is behind this kid. I mean, he just puts off an aura about him. And it, it feels 
I know, yeah, I know we've had like retiree quarterbacks or backup quarterbacks start for us in the past. But I don't know, man. It's just this feels different. I don't know. It's 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 a different feeling, but it's a good feeling. Like it's it is like an Andrew Luck type feeling or a Peyton Manning type feeling close to it when it came to him being drafted to us. We definitely got the most talented draft pick quarterback wise in this draft. He showed it. I think you mentioned it before um, when we were just talking that um, they they thought he was going to be a two to four year project. Only having yeah. so many game, only started so many games in college, and he's went out there and proved a lot of people wrong. And I love that this kid's got so much potential, so much talent. He's got the staff behind him to support him. He's got the team behind him to support him. I mean, the sky's the limit with this kid. It was exciting to watch him. And he's got the fan base behind him. Absolutely. And, you know, and I said it after one of the one of the training camps we went to. You know, mm-hmm. the only thing I could describe what I was seeing was there's a new sheriff in town. Oh my that's God. it. That, that's the only way I could describe it, man. <laughs> Yeah. I'm I'm really excited to see how far he can take this. I mean, man, he's just I don't know. Like some deep down inside me, Patrick Mahomes is a phenomenal athlete. Like he's a phenom right now in the league, but I think Anthony Richardson with the right people around him, the right talent, the right coaching, I think he can go beyond Patrick Mahomes and whatever feat that he has so far. I agree. I it's absolutely just, agree. it's un there's so much still. It's like I don't know when you when I look at this kid, I see it like the ocean, man. Bottomless, endless possibility. There's so much still unknown, so much untapped potential we've yet to see because this is just what he came into the league with. What's he gonna be like in three years when he's really untapped all this potential and gets comfortable? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean he gets a, good a, hands. if he can get a right side line to block for him. Oh god, that, that right side was was still killing me. Dude, that right side's been our Achilles heel. No pun intended, Aaron Rodgers. By the way, <laughs> oh, uh, well, that's brutal. <laughs> brutal. So sorry, I couldn't help that. But uh, but no, nah, like that's they really have been our Achilles heel for um. Ever since we let Gulinski oh, walk, walk. Gulinski and Fisher. Well, Fisher was left side tackle. Uh, Either way, it just it just I just never thought we'd miss Fisher that much and Glow, mostly Glow though. Yeah, uh, yeah, because I thought I thought Raymond did real well. I thought he did Raymond, real well. Raymond and, was or Raman was actually voted the PFF best offensive lineman this week. Really. He was. Hell yeah. See? See and and you know, so we're good hands on the left side with, with Raymond and Q. Now we just gotta uh, get Smith and I don't even know who our guard is. Fries. 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 Yep. Yeah, he's gonna have to step it up. We didn't I mean this panel obviously is not like Fries to begin with, I don't think. I mean not like a not like a huge dislike for the guy, but he's just not that guy. So yeah, I mean, he's He's not consistent enough with with his blocking. So I mean, do we do we try? Because I know our uh, our draft pick that we got this year. Um, what's his name? Why am I drawing a blank right now? The Whit. lineman that we got in. Huh? Was is it Wit? Is it Wit? Something like that. Yeah. Whoever it is, our newest draft pick that we got that was a really good lineman pickup in this draft. At what point do you like, you know, especially when you're uh, Coach Soprano, like, where do you, when do you make a change? I mean, I know it's only week one, obviously, but um, I know Ballard likes fries. He talked highly of fries when we interviewed him at training camp this year. But um, at what point, man, do like, do we give this rookie a chance? Because he's played both tackle and guard. Uh, that one, we won't know. Uh, Blake Freeland. Freeland, yes. There we go. Yep. Fourth round pick. Yep. Um you know, I, I just I, I can't answer that because we don't see how he's progressing. Only the coaching staff does. 
you know, but if we continue to suck on that right side, man, you got to do something. You got to do something. Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, just, I just don't know what Braden Smith's problem is. We paid him all this money. <laughs> what happened? Hey, you're telling on me. I mean, oh my gosh. But, you know, we got, you know, we, I wish we had the applause button again. You know, we'll switch sides of the ball here real quick for, you know, for the last 10 or so minutes. Um, so a big, a big round of applause for DeForest on his touchdown. Man, that was incredible. That was phenomenal. That, that's it goes to show y'all. I mean, you, you probably all seen it on social media, but it is football one on one. That's why you never stop until that whistle blows. And you play to the whistle, you know. And and that was a heads up play by Zaire. Big round applause for him. Punching Absolutely, that ball, punching that ball back out while it was still alive. Speaking of Ziggy, you know he's under investigation by the NFL with a drug test again. Under investigation or just taking a drug test? Taking a drug test. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, that's another one. That's pretty standard for having yeah. a phenomenal game. <laughs> yeah. it, really, it is. Is it standard, really? Yeah. Huh. I didn't know that. I mean, it's yep. just, it's just everywhere. Is why because I feel like he's been drug tested way more than the average player, like average star player. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, now I don't know what his his. His test count is, but it, it does seem that way. It's up there. Because, I mean, everyone's just like, again, and again, and again. So, it's just like, dude, come on. This dude just a beast. <laughs> He's proven to you time and time again that he tests clean. At what and, point, it's going to become a harassment. And he plays his ass off. He does. He's really become... I mean, he's really shined for this team over the years. I mean, he went from special special teams, second and third, third and second string to now a starting spot and a captain. Come on, man. Yep. Plus, he's a friend of our show, so we got to talk highly about him. <laughs> well, we don't have to, but we do because he deserves it. <laughs> oh, yeah, he absolutely you know, does. He, he works his ass off, and come Sunday, he plays his ass off. You know, he, he tied – the Colts single game tackle record with 18 tackles this past Sunday. I think um, he, he's fourth in tackles in the entire NFL right now. It's, it's pretty fucking one, badass. <laughs> it's only, it's only one, week one. Idea. Yeah, and, and I'll tell you what. I had some reservations when we didn't sign Okariki back. Okarike. There you go. But I was – I was seeing, devastated. Seeing Leonard back, seeing Zaire and Speed, them boys are playing good ball and they're playing together. I have actually, no, yeah, I have no doubts about our linebacking core now. That was None. actually gonna be my next question. How did it feel seeing Shaq back on the field and what was your takeaways from his gameplay? Uh he's back. That was my takeaway. He's back. That's you my takeaway as well. Yeah, we we got we got, um, uh, and I know he li I know he listens to our show, so don't black my eye when I say this. But we got Darius back. <laughs> Shaq, you we're know. sorry, buddy. We're sorry. Now, I I did notice that uh, third downs they pull him. You know they yeah. they kind of they kind of did a little cat, uh, snap count on him which is fine, especially coming off a concussion. That and still just don't want to push a back issue. Yeah, just making sure his, his body gets back in play shape. Yeah, you, you, I mean, you, you, can be, you can be in all the physical shape you want, but until your body gets used to those hits and bruises and bumps and scratches, it, it's a different feeling. And anybody Absolutely. that's played football knows this. Absolutely. And I mean, well, just it's not only just football, just the high intensity and the adrenaline that comes from these types of situations. I mean, it's no comparison, but like, you know, like you, you know, you're a veteran, you know what it's like, you know, you, um, especially on a battlefield of some sort, you know, you just get that adrenaline going. You don't know what's, you know, your bot, you know, your mind's just telling you to go, go, go. 
you, know, you never know what's hurt on your body. That's why people just break down um, so much after they're done with the military. In this case, the NFL too, right? So it's just like yeah. um, the adrenaline gets going. Sometimes you got to save the players from themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's thinking he can keep going and going and going, but all it's going to take is one good shot to the back or one good shot to the head again. Yep. So, speaking yeah, of so shot, shot to the head, I hope Ogletree's doing all right. I haven't heard anything else besides he's he's he's, he's in the concussion protocol. Man, That's that was so, that was such a dirty hit. It wasn't even funny. Yeah, it was. You know, and, oh my and when he got hit, he he basically would got knocked out because <laughs> he went right down. But he held he on to the ball. <laughs> Way to go, oh Drew. God. Yep, good job, Drew. Proud of you, buddy. Hold Hope you get back ball. out there soon. Absolutely. But um, and then Evan Hall, you know, he did what he could, and then he had his knee injury. I think it's – I'm pretty sure it was a torn ACL is what he ended up having. So, I think he's out for a while. Mm. Um, it, uh, you, but, do you think it's this artificial turf causing all these knee and Achilles man. and hamstrings and everything else? Because, to me, it seems like – those three injuries that I just mentioned are getting more and more prevalent every week. Man, I, in my honest opinion, Big P, I don't think so. I think, I mean, come on. I mean, there was rubber, there was rubber turf back in the day where people had to wear tennis shoes and everything. That shit was hard as concrete, and people wouldn't get nearly, nearly hurt nearly amount of being hurt as people are now. I just think the speed of the game and the power of the game is changing. It's just, you know, it's, you know, look, I mean, I mean, I know we're a cult show, but look at, look at the Aaron Rodgers thing. Like he took, he had to take, he's almost 40 years old for one, for one, for two, he took off. Like he's, you know, like he's 21 again, man. Like it's just, the body can't keep up with that. It caused him to get hurt. He wouldn't even he wouldn't even hit. I seen it happen when he took off. Like he got hit, yes, but it was after contact that um that he had that Achilles injury. So it's just like I'm not gonna blame the artificial turf. I mean, I've stood on it, you know, being on the sidelines, and um I just think the speed, I mean, now if you want to put it this way, actually this gave me this thought. So is artificial turf good for the speed and like the evolution of the game right now? Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. I mean, um, trying to get over myself here. Um, so I just think like the speed needs to be played on grass with the, with the elevation of performance that these players are doing needs to be on grass. I think, I think they get a better penetration with the cleats. They get a better grip, um, uh, Juking, you know, their foot, their feet are planted better, um, softer, obviously. Uh, so I don't know, really, but I mean, I just, I don't think it's the problem. I just think a lot of it has to do with also just the speed of this game. Could be. What do you think? Uh, honestly, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, and that's why I posed it as a question. You know, we need some smart scientists to go out there and start collecting data, you know, so they can take care of these players better. That's what I think. That's what needs to happen. Because yeah, there's, I mean, there's something going on that's causing all these where in the years past, you didn't see it as, as frequent as you do in today's game. True. All right, we'll cover... Let's cover our very young uh, defensive backfield real quick, and we'll get out of here for the night. So, takeaways from the defensive backfield in week one, that young core. I love how they're using Julian Blackman now. That dude caught my eye, and he was involved in damn near every defensive play. I love that. Yeah, and I, I absolutely love that. No, I do too, man. It's, it was good seeing him back out there. I mean, watching the hometown boy Juju out there too. You know, he did a phenomenal job. Yeah. You know, being being a rookie. I mean, Gus has got his guys. I mean, we could see a new Legion of Boom. Very possible. I mean, very they're possible. very similar. They're they're built. 
they're built and their strategies or their schemes are very similar to the Legion of Boom. So I think, you know, there's very, that very much potential. They just got to grow a little bit more like the rest of this team. I mean, we got, we got one of the youngest teams in the NFL, averaging 25.8 years old. Ryan Kelly being the oldest at 30. He just turned 30, I think, in the summer, I believe. But, yeah, I mean, impressive all around. There's so much potential here. Just, again, this is addressing the Colts Nation here. We just got to keep being patient. Optimism is great. It brings still brings good juice to these guys. They need to know that we have their back. Um, again, with the whole JT situation, we definitely need him. Hopefully we get a deal struck soon. Um, not too soon, worried. though. I'm not worried about the deal. I'm just worried about him getting back on the field. That's what I'm saying. Like, hopefully we can reach something but, to where, you know, where he can get back on the field. And But that's the main thing, though, is he gets back on the field and he actually plays. Um, Got anything else to add, Patrick, before we get out I, here tonight? I'm extremely excited for our future. Extremely I too. excited. I am, too. And speaking of exciting futures, we'll have our other show this Thursday at 730. We will do our pregame uh, show to get ready for the Houston, Texas and Houston, which, by the way, your big P here is going to be in Houston. He's actually put a challenge out to everybody. Anybody who partakes in alcohol, first and foremost, please drink responsibly, of course. Anyone who partakes in drinking of alcohol, he wants you to do a challenge for him. Anytime that you see Big P in or on the television, take a shot. Because last year, he was all over the damn place. <laughs> <laughs> NFL Network, ESPN, memes everywhere. I mean, he was everywhere last year. So he's putting out a challenge to everybody. If you happen to see him on TV this Sunday in Houston, uh, take a shot for him. He'll definitely appreciate it. That'd be that'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> You're gonna have, probably have a lot of drunk people out there, by the way. And then we want account messages or hit us up on Facebook, Twitter, whatever, and say, "You sorry son of a bitch, I had to do 37 shots." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, def definitely call his big ass out. That's for sure. But have some fun with it. Enjoy, enjoy the time. Um, now, I got a serious question for you, Acosta. All right. We got the Rams coming to town next home game. Mm -hmm. What's on the menu for our oh tailgate? I did, but I, I'll, let, I'll, I'll let you think about it for a second because I want to talk about all the hard work that you and Miss Sarah do getting all the food, getting it prepped, getting it cooked, getting the utensils, getting the drinks. It is a shitload of work without a doubt. So you and Miss Sarah get a gigantic clap. Well, we definitely couldn't do it without our without our tailgate family, our tailgate crew. Shout out to the Forge tailgate crew, Daniel, Rebecca, Darnella, you know who you are. You know who all our regulars are. Yep. Thank Adam you J. so much. Adam J. Um, who else? Uh, oh, my gosh. There's even, a lot to name. Even um, the guy that made our, our custom cornhole boards came out and tailgated with us. Gene Quitter with uh, Scorpion, Scorpion Cornhole. Yeah, he so did. if you haven't seen our cornhole boards, they are phenomenal. They're actually pro grade, so you get the legit cornhole boards the pros use. Uh, be sure you hit him up, Scorpion Cornhole Boards. Uh, shout out to Adam J as well and his company. Uh, what was it called? No Limit, right? No Limit Restoration. No Limit Restoration. Shout out to him. Hit him up for all your restoration needs. You know, we'll do a few good plugs for our friends. Um, Absolutely. But yeah, I mean, you know, and, and what most people don't know, is Adam J is the one that donated the RV to the Anvil. Yeah, that beautiful machine that you've seen set at that tailgate was all yeah. from him. The only tailgating vehicle in the country that's been christened by the team's G GM. I'm claiming that right now until proven wrong. 
hey, here, here. All right. <laughs> you know, so yeah, absolutely. Adam J, we love you to death, brother. You know, if you, if you haven't seen his uh, Facebook page, just go look it up. No limit restoration or renovations, not restorations, renovations. Okay. So no limit restorations. Um, renovations. Also, which one is it, Pat? Renovation. I mean, good okay. Good Lord Almighty. No limit. Renovation. Goodness gracious. <laughs> and be sure, be, you know, Big P's also a un, uh, an unspoken sponsor. He's got his business, New Pal CBD. Be sure you hit it up on Facebook, online, or go stop at the store at New Palestine, Indiana for all your CBD. He's got gummies, oils, pre-rolls. He's got it all. I mean, go hit him up. CBD is the new way to go. A lot of athletes are using it um, for recovery purposes, mental health purposes. Lots of good benefits there with CBD. So go hit him up. He's your local weed guy, as he likes to say. So don't be a, don't be a dummy. Try my gummy. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Big P. With that, with all that being said, everybody, thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. We will see you again uh, on the next show, pre gaming the Houston game. Uh, so don't, don't forget to follow us on all our socials: Facebook, Twitter, or I'm sorry, X. Instagram, YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Uh, can't wait to see y'all again at the next tailgate come October 1st. We'll get there, but y'all have a great night. Stay blessed, stay pretty, and above all, go Colts. Go Colts. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast and Bill Show on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Google Play and Apple Podcasts.